Hey, it's Tim here. In today's video, I'm going to be covering the three type conversion functions, int, float, and string. Okay, let's get stuck in. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect to a mock data set. I'm going to make this available in the description below so you can download it and have a go yourself. So I'm going to go ahead here to Excel, uh, go to my desktop, and you can see I have this mock data here for type conversion. Let's open this up and I'll show you basically what's going on in this data set. It's a very, very simple data set. We've got uh, a, uh, we've got names of individuals, age, year, and height and inches. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to deliberately create scenarios here with this data set um, to sort of showcase what's possible and what's not possible um, with all these functions. So let's go ahead and go to sheet one. And this is it. This is the basic data set we're going to work with. I'll go ahead and take an extract just to sort of start to get into a good habit. And um, I'll keep that in the same folder here. So let's just hit save. And now we're pretty much ready to go. Okay. First thing I'm going to do is drag first name onto rows. And then we're going to start looking at some of this information. Now, if you look at this, year born is at the moment uh, in this sort of uh, upper part, which is typically where the dimensions are. So um, in 2020.2, I believe, um, Tableau got rid of the separator uh, that so do you where measures and dimensions were. And now they have just this sort of subtle line. So essentially speaking, the year we're born here is actually coming across as an integer, which is why it's sort of sitting here at the top, uh, whereas everything else is coming through as a measure. So you've got age, height, and inches. And I think this is partly because Tableau understands that this is uh, it's a slightly sort of a specific data type. So it is actually able to look inside rows and give a guess as to what it might be. So let's just build this table. What I'll do is I'll make everything discrete so we can just see the information. We've got some, um, uh, ages and names duplicating themselves here. So that's that's good to know. What I'll also do is I'll bring out age and again, I'll make this discrete just so we can see this as a tabular formula. Then height and inches, I'll do the same. And again, we'll do this as discrete just so we can see that. The data count, we don't need that so much, um, but that's pretty much where we are. This is all our data types, okay? So we have this scenario where we have duplicate names. I wouldn't worry too much about that. It's not going to cause as much uh, of a problem, especially if we keep the year in, in context. And so we're going to be pretty much ready to go. Right, the first function we're going to cover is changing numbers into text. So let's look at the string function. Okay, in order to do this, I'm just going to create a calculated field and bring in our calculation window. I'll make this a little bit smaller just so we can see more of the window here. And then I'll bring this back out so you can see the functions, okay? I'll call this a string, okay? And what we need to do here is just type in the function str. So str will bring up this uh, function. And if we hit enter, you'll see that it wraps itself around that. And if you look on the right-hand side, it says returns a string given an expression. Example, string age returns all the values of the age measures as string. So that's exactly what we're going to do. So let's go ahead here and just type in age. And if I just uh, to type in age, you'll see that that comes in. And at the moment, age is a measure. So what this is going to do is going to turn this into a piece of text. What does that mean? I'll show you. So let's just say we hit apply and then we uh, bring this into our view. And notice this time around, when I bring it in, it's a blue item, so it behaves like a dimension, like a discrete item. And I'm just gonna put it right next to where we have the sum of age, which is actually the aggregated version of the measure that we're using. So if I now put that in there, you'll see that because it's a string, it doesn't automatically aggregate. Um, you can't really sort of do much uh, with it there. Um, but also, if this wasn't a whole number, let's say this was a decimal point, it would also turn this into a piece of text. Let me show you how that works. So let's go in here, let's change this, and let's just change the height that we've got. So let's say height, okay? Height in inches. Let's change that into a string and then hit apply. And you'll see the Tableau changes that to a string. Now, when it does that, you'll notice that it doesn't just show the two decimal places that we had. It actually goes into the data set and goes and gets as much precision as it can out of that number. So that's just something to bear in mind. If you're gonna be turning floats or numbers into strings, just consider the precision that you want out of that data set. Because if you get something like this, you're probably gonna to have to do some cleaning up to remove the decimal point uh, information that you need or rounding up or rounding down, then returning a string just to give you something that's actually worthwhile working with. Because um, heights in inches, you probably want to turn that into some other sort of metrics like uh, maybe foot and inches, like you know five foot six or something like that. This is just all in inches. So you maybe you could do a, a conversion calculation in Tableau to sort of clean that up. But that's pretty much the string function. It works on both 
integers and floats. And you just need to bear in mind that it will do a pretty good job of turning that, including bringing back all the precision that you have inside of your numerical fields if you have something with a high level of precision like floats. Okay, let's go on to the next function. Okay, for the next bit, I'm going to show you how the integer function works. And we're gonna use the uh, height in inches, which is actually a float as an example to show you that. So let's go ahead and create a new calculated field. In this case, I'm just gonna call it integer, okay? Let's just call it integer. And this is another very simple function. Just type in INT and you'll see it comes up straight away. Hit enter and now we have our expression already. Now, what I need to do is to put the height in inches into this. So let's just go ahead and type in height in inches. Hit enter and you'll see that the calculation is now valid. Let's hit apply, drag it into our view. And now what I'm going to do is I'm actually gonna put it right here. And at the moment, because an integer uh, is coming through as like a, essentially like as a measure, and um, what I'm actually going to do is turn it into a discrete item very, very shortly. So I'll put it in here or create a bar chart. And then now if we go back and make it a discrete item, we'll actually get to see it as a table. So you'll see that well, exactly what's happened here by turning it into an integer, it basically behaves as like a whole number. So there are no fractions related to this. Essentially, the difference between a, a float and an integer is an integer is a whole number, essentially like a, you know, 2010 could be an integer or 36 could be an integer. When you talk about your age, generally we talk in integers no one says they are you know 33.3 years old they just say they're 33 years old so in that case you're using integers however when you work with floats you get essentially a fraction related to that number so 33.3 is technically something like 33 and one third okay and so integers will basically remove that sort of precision from your number and just return a whole number. This is useful if you're uh, working with a data set that maybe needs that. It's actually quite common when you work with certain data sets that you might want integers over floats. And so this is essentially how you do it. You just put that into an integer function and you get a whole number back. Let's click OK. And now we're going to go to the next function, which is essentially the float function. And we're going to use this on the age uh, as a way of figuring this out. Okay, so let's go ahead and create a calculation here. Let's create calculated field. I'm just going to type in float. Now, this is a weird one because in this particular example, what I'm doing is I'm applying it to age, which is at the moment, it's like a whole number. It's just in, it's an integer. But if I just go ahead and do that, um, let's just say float. We're going to look at another way that you can see that this is a float. Let's just hit apply and um, let's just drag this into our view. And we're going to deliberately put it here in the uh, top. But now you can see that this is a float, but it looks exactly the same as our integer. And that's because there is no precision in our age data that can make this float work in sort of more detail. If I head over here to the left hand side, you'll see that we have age and float. They look exactly the same. But if I right click on age and I go to uh, change data type, you'll see that this says number whole, which means it's an integer. Whereas if I go to the float calculation we've just created, which looks identical in the table, and actually go to that and see change data type, it says number decimal. So this is how I know that I've actually changed the number to a float, even though it looks exactly the same as an integer. So this is a really important sort of semantic thing to be aware of, um, because it can fundamentally change the way your charts behave and also how you do things like aggregate and work with the data. Now, that's not to say that you couldn't force decimals into the formatting. Let's say that I wanted this age for whatever reason to be formatted, uh, you know, like a decimal, I could still force that. So if I click on format here for this age integer, I just go to number custom, I can still force it to have decimal places, but it's still going to be a whole number. Okay, so that's just something to be aware of. What you see and what it actually is aren't necessarily linked. Formatting is sort of separate to what's actually happening with the data structure. And that's something that catches a lot of people out, especially when you want to do things like formatting currency. So that's just something to be aware of. Okay, so that's pretty much it for this video. We've covered the three main type conversion functions, int, string, and float. And essentially what those functions do is they change whatever you give them, whatever expression you give them into another data type. Now this is commonly used in use cases where you're working inside of a calculation and maybe you need to compare integers with integers or floats to floats. Uh, typically when you work with data types, you need to be working with the same range of data types. So this is a great way of getting around that problem, okay? 
So that's pretty much it. If you've enjoyed this video, you know what to do. Hit a comment below. Let me know what you'd like to see next. Next week, I'm going to start trying to tackle that mountain of server content that everyone's been asking for alongside still covering some functions. So uh, we will get to more complex topics. I think it's just really important to cover the fundamentals so that when you talk about complex topics, you can reference the fundamentals a little later on. That's essentially the game plan here. We're covering the simple stuff so we can do the complex stuff later on. So stay tuned for that. All right. I'll catch you in the next video.